Welcome to this year's virtual cross-cultural walking tour. In this episode, we continue our tour of Chinatown and we find ourselves in Mon Kiang School and the Wang's Benevolence Association. Ngo Meng Hai Wang Lai Jun. My name is Ainsley Wang. I'm a director of the Wang's Benevolence Association and I will be your guide today. We're here in Chinatown at the headquarters of the Wong's Association at 123 East Pender Street. Today, you'll find us across the street from Newtown Bakery. The Wong's Benevolent Association is a typical example of a Chinese clan society. These types of societies were formed in order to support new migrants who came to North America around, starting around the turn of the century. At that time, it was a largely bachelor society. Uh, men left their families back in the villages in southern China, in Guangdong province, and came to North America in order to, um, in order to, to look for work. When the new men arrived in North America, the clan society was often their first stop when they, when they got off the boat. The, uh, the clan association served as the employment office, the bank, the uh, the housing association, the, uh, the clansmen who were already here helped the uh, new migrants to uh, find a place to live, to get a job, to um, send money and letters back home. Chinatown in the early days was largely a bachelor society. Uh, many of the new migrants paid the head tax in order to come into Canada and um, with the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1923, which effectively slammed the door on immigration from China, these men were uh, cut off from their families and um, lived here alone in North America uh, until the repeal of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1947. This is Mon Kiang School on the third floor of the Wang's Association building. Mon Kiang was founded in 1925 in order to support the growing numbers of Chinese Canadian families in Chinatown. At that time, um, the majority of families spoke Cantonese or their village dialects of Cantonese at home, but they were sent to Chinese schools such as Mon Kiang in order to learn to read and write. These children attended for 10 years, um, beginning at age five. The classes ran Monday to Friday after their regular school starting at four o'clock and also on Saturday mornings. In my family, my dad and my aunts and uncles all attended Mon Kiang School. Here's a picture of my dad at age six in 1947. And here's a picture of my dad um, when he recently returned to Mon Kiang School in order to speak to the current class. In Vancouver, Chinese families uh, and had their children, they all spoke Cantonese at home and uh, Cantonese was the working language in the neighborhood. It was thought that it was important for um, the children of Chinese families to have a formal Cantonese education so that um, the children would be fluent in uh, Cantonese uh, so that they would be able to work and conduct business within Chinatown. At that time, um, Vancouver was quite discriminatory and uh, Chinese families largely lived and worked within the boundaries of Chinatown. So it was thought that it was important to, uh, to get a good education so that you would be able to get a job in the community and be able to communicate. In the 1950s and 60s, enrollment at Mon Kiang and the other Chinese schools in Chinatown was strong. The classrooms were full. But starting in the 1970s, there was some outward migration to the suburbs uh, by Chinese Canadians, such as my parents, who were able to live and work outside of Chinatown for the first time. The, uh, the children of the 70s, like me, um, either attended Chinese schools in their own uh, neighborhoods, or um, they missed out entirely on the Chinese school experience, like I did. At that time, um, it was stressed that kids should um, 
fully assimilate and be model Canadians. So instead of um, spending the time on Chinese lessons, I was encouraged to do sports and extracurricular activities and to uh, fully live the, the Canadian, the Canadian, the life of a Canadian kid in the suburbs. Chinese school enrollment at Mongkyung continued to decline and the school closed in 2011. However, today Cantonese is considered an endangered language and um, we were really pleased to be able to partner with UBC and Youth Collaborative for Chinatown in order to reopen the school in 2016 for a different learning experience. Right now there's a Saturday school class at Mongkyung School which is a unique place-based curriculum where the students learn um, basic vocabulary in class, practice the phrases, and then um, take to the streets to support the Chinatown merchants and uh, practice their Cantonese in a real life setting. The Wong's Benevolent Association has a second building, which is a block west, at 29 East Pender Street. This building is the headquarters of the Han Sing Athletic Association. And we are super pleased that uh, we will be holding a Museum of Vancouver exhibit starting this summer. And this exhibit is called A Seat at the Table. Please stay tuned for news regarding the launch and uh, join us for this exciting development in Chinatown. Thanks for joining me today.